Hello, beautiful souls. This is Rada from Galactic Goddess Podcast. I'm back for another episode, stepping out of fear and into sacred leadership. And this is not just a light and fluffy episode about positive vibes. This is about really, really owning your own power at this time and not being a victim of this traumatic energy, this warlike energy that is causing fear and paralysis for many people at this time. It is not the time to be paralyzed. It's a time to awaken to your gifts, to your truth, to your humanity, and um, step forward and create, create communities where you are. A little bit about me. I am the founder of Rada Publishing House. I specialize in curating books that are empowering for others and for the authors and the readers. I love to activate people's leadership in the work I do as a healer and a coach at Goddess Code Academy. And I have a modality called Goddess Activations, which is my sacred modality that I uh, created. And I love to share this with women and men. Occasionally, I do get some men clients that want to do sessions. Um, and I, my goal is to activate a million pillars of light in the world with goddess activations. Yeah, that sounds like a lot, but I have a lot brewing in the pipeline. I'm very excited to be teaching at a bigger level in the coming year of 2022. And in teaching, I will be activating um, other healers to do this work. So that's how we're going to do it. In the meantime, please tune in. And I just want you to know you are an amazing, incredible soul. Please don't let anything or anyone ever dim your light. You are here to shine. You are here to share your gifts. And you are here to step into your sacred leadership. Hello, beautiful souls. This is Rada from Galactic Goddess Podcast. I'm back today. This morning I woke up with this absolutely um, clear message that it is so important now to step out of fear and into leadership because I run a group called Spinning to Heal the World and we share a lot of information and we also you know do healing like monthly healing we do it twice a month free healing sessions to help raise everybody's vibration and the one thing i'm really coming becoming clear about is that we all need to step into our divine leadership and part of my purpose in this world is to help activate people's inner leadership i do that in the work I do one-to-one with my clients who uh, come to me for for various reasons and um, I work with a lot of executives but it's about inner leadership right because it's how we lead our life every single day and it's about not waiting for someone to fix the problem because most likely it no one else will (laughs) we have to lead be the leaders for the things that we feel passionately about. So I help women to activate their inner passion and lead themselves into their divine destiny, whatever it is that they want to do. Say they are um, an executive, but they really want to do work um, with children or something like that. Then we find a bridge to use their skills that they already have to start doing the work that they want to do, even if it's only part-time, and then it starts to lead to something bigger. Um, I've had I've had people like lawyers that wanted to do um, writing, write a book, write a screenplay, and how do they get there? How can they c- come from this very um, powerful position but not in the way that they want into creating the world and life that they do want and so I help people sort of bridge those gaps activate certain attributes 
of um, their gifts and their talents. And right now, <laughs> I have a I have a big lion dog. Oh, <laughs> he just came right next to me. He's he wants my attention. <laughs> uh, his name is Buddy, you guys, and he's actually the neighbor's dog. But uh, he started coming to the house every day, so I started to feed him. And before I knew it, he started to sleep on the porch. I think his owner comes in and out of town, so he's not always, you know, being taken care of. So I've sort of adopted him, and I bought him a big fluffy bed. And the, the owner knows that he lives here, <laughs> that he stays here, but he, he doesn't care. So anyways, he's this big lion dog, and when I sit outside, he comes up and starts to kind of nuzzle me and make these grunting lion sounds. <laughs> So the point is, is that wherever you are, and a lot of people are having concerns right now about what's going on in the world, and rightfully so, there is no spiritually bypassing here. I am not into spiritual bypassing. I am I'm against spiritual bypassing because it, it doesn't actually, for the times we live in, um, we can't all just be Buddhas and ignore the collective, right? At the same time, we can't take on everything that's happening in every area of the world because that would absolutely, utterly decimate us before we could even get our day started. So we have to find ways that are practical and spiritual to make things viable in the real, in the real world. And what I'm trying to say is that if you, if you say you're living in California and you're not happy about the mandates, I just got a, an email about the mandates going on tomorrow, uh, going on very soon about, you know, basically them mandating everyone to get vaccinated, including children that are 12 years old. And I, you know, this is, this is very scary because we we don't know what that's going to lead to and how that's going to affect children. Children naturally have the highest immune systems and I am an advocate for children, but I am not in California. Therefore, I cannot go out and protest or do anything like that. So the important thing to do is if you're if you're in a certain area is you need to step into your leadership. You need to gather your friends in the local areas and do um, come together and start to create something in your community. This is a time to step into your community. The community that I am creating with Spinning to Heal the World is about raising our vibration because a lot of fear and trauma is coming up and part of this is it's not about turning away looking away but there are many layers and aspects to this one layer and aspect is i have found personally to be clearing out war trauma okay now let me explain because you're you're going okay what does this have to do with what's going on the way that things are being handled in this aggressive fashion is very much similar to what it would be like in a war situation where you have to do things or you are going to get put in a camp or you're going to get a band or you're going to be locked out of your supermarket and you can't even buy food if you do if you do not submit to these mandates okay <clears throat> but number two mandates are not the law okay mandates are not the law Please look it up. It's really important that you understand that, okay? These are just man-made things. God gave us this beautiful earth. God did not give us overlords to rule us. That's absurd, ridiculous, and crazy, especially when they don't follow their own mandates and they are out partying, you know, on their birthdays and doing things with like thousands of people and they do not care how they run their life. They No rules apply to them, but all the rules apply to you and then some. So <clears throat> this is about people waking up. Bottom line, I'm gonna give it to you straight. Um, every, every obstacle in our lives is here to awaken us and say, 
we are the leaders of our life. We don't need to have dark overlords who have benefited from us, our tax money, who tell us what to do with our tax money to, you know, like that, like that is not how the creator wanted things to be. But we came into this world and we came into this world at this time for a reason. There is a soul contract for us. Each one has a different contract. I could not tell you what your soul contract is unless I had access to your Akashic records. And part, and I was just telling um, someone the other day, because when I do speak to people, I actually have the Akashic records all the time. It's part of my human design. I'm actually always in the Akashic records. But I don't look, I don't look into people's stuff because it's, you know, first of all, number one, it's not what you think. I'm not going to see all your dirty secrets in the Akashic Records. If we had a past life together and I'm talking to you, it will appear to me. If there is something that you need to know, it will come to me. Um, that's just part of a gift. <laughs> and it's just, it, it, it's a gift. Um... It's, it's just very interesting because it just comes up. It just comes up every time I talk to somebody. It's not bad. And I'm not, and again, I'm not peeking into your closet or anything like that. It just, whatever is in the forefront, say we had a past life together and there was some unresolved issues and trauma or there was a lot of love and there was a broken heart or something like that, that lifetime would come forward. And then I would just share it because it wants resolution okay all karma wants resolution and right now we're coming to a place where we want karmic resolution on earth this is where all darkness comes to the light and none can hide we are getting much more psychic on a very on a very global level where people most people and if they haven't taken something that interferes with their abilities where there are certain things right now that if you take it, you will not be able to have your abilities. I have had friends and um, associates, healers, that were very psychic, except they weren't psychic about this, and they took this one thing, and after they took it, they were not able to have access to their psychic abilities, nor were they able to do healing. They were completely cut off from their own source code within, um, deactivated completely to the point they were desperate and had to pretend they knew what they were doing, even though they didn't. <laughs> that's kind of sad. So um, that's something to be very aware of that, you know, at this point, we we live in a culture that is desperate to give away their power. I mean, they just, here, take it, take it. Okay, where can I line up to give it away? I'll do it, I'll do it. That's not how it works. God gave us sovereignty for a reason so that we could stand in our personal power and not be victims, okay? We are not meant to be victims. We were not born to be victims. Yes, many of us, including myself, have gone through many situations that were victimizing. And guess what? They were all for me to step into my power, right? So I'll just use me as an example. I have been through victim situations. I came from a childhood where I was abused and told no one loves me, okay? I was I was kicked down early on and I had to rise up. I was absolutely emotionally tormented and just told basically I'm nothing, nothing. No one loves me and that I'm just like really shouldn't even exist. Um, again, this was not from my mother and it was not from my father. This was from someone else that was very much in charge of me though. So that being said, I was traumatized beyond traumatized for so many years and it really affected my self-worth. But guess what? I didn't let it stop me. I knew that I was hurting. It, my heart was absolutely broken. And I attracted relationships that reflected those sentiments over and over again. And even my last relationship had a bit of that, right? And not not completely, but at the end, it at the end it went full on. He went full on with his 
um, trying to make me feel unloved and all of that. And that's okay because guess what? It helped me rise higher. What I, why I'm telling you this is not so you feel sorry for me. I don't want a pity party. This is about rising, okay? We put really on a soul level, I put those challenges in front of me from the very get-go because I knew I had to rise and I had to rise from the bottom you know, and continue to rise to my highest, okay? Not compared to anybody else and not not like, oh, I'm the greatest person in the world. I had to rise into my power for me so I could be of service, so I could help remind you that you need to step into your power. That's how it works. That's my, that's part of my job in this world. And that's what I do every single day is I remind people of their greatness. I remind people that they're here for a reason and it's not just to be a victim and it's not just to be afraid. It is to say no. I teach people to say no because that is very hard, you know, when you've gone through abuse. For me, it took me many years to be able to be like, nope, no, thank you. That's not for me. And just do it with love and honor and respect. Um, But these are the things we have to go through. So whatever it is that you're going through, I want to tell you, it may be very different. Maybe your parents, maybe your upbringing was like, everyone loved you so much. And, but you, but now you're a people pleaser because you feel like you need to keep those people happy. That's a totally different scenario. But at the same time, the theme is the same. You got to break free. You're not here to just make everybody happy. You're here to be true to your soul, okay? You're here to be true to your soul. And your soul is in service of the divine creator of all that is. When we are true to our soul, we are true to God. When we are true to soul, we're true to goddess. There's no way around it. People pleasing is the most toxic thing you could ever do in your life. I do not care if people love me or hate me or whatever of course i want to create community and i want to have loving connections but guess what just by the fact that i am stepping into my sovereignty that triggers a lot of people whether i like it or not i want peace i want love and i'm not going to argue with anybody about any of this it's not up for discussion It, it is what it is and everyone's living in their own reality But you have to know who you are. You have to know who you are and what you stand for. Um, You know, like, my ex was like, I don't want to think. I don't want to think. So he didn't. And I was like, what? His mantra was, I want to be mindless. And I'm going, okay, well, we wanted to create these these things together. They take mind. So I guess, am I the only mind that's going to be used here? <laughs> like, is that how it's going to be? I'm going to be responsible for thinking of everything. And that, and I was for a while and it took away from my creativity because I was busy trying to think for him because he didn't want to think for himself. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's not the kind of partnership I want to be in. I'm all about equal opportunity here, like, and, and, and people showing up and, and him showing up into his leadership. And when he could not do that and did not want to do that and refused to do that, I couldn't also do that with him. So to me, I don't want to be the only leader like in my group or what, or anything. Like I create my projects based on activating other people's leaderships. That is important to me. I am here to help activate leadership within the people I work with, whether that be in my coaching and healing practice, whether that be teaching at Goddess Code Academy, or whether that be curating the books that I do. And everyone is a leader when they are in the book and they know it and they feel it and they rise. And that is just part of my gift. And one of the, why it's one of my gifts is because I was knocked down so hard as a child. I was told I was nothing. I was unlovable. Nobody loved me to the point I realized I don't want anybody to feel that way. I want people to feel they're worthy. I want people to feel they're loved. I want people to feel they are, they, their voice matters. Their voice matters. Since my voice was shut down 
to the point I could not speak. I want people to use their voice in a positive way, not a, not in a way to cut other people down, but in a way that they express their soul, okay? It all comes back to the soul. You are here on a soul mission. You may be rolling your eyes and going, what are you talking about? Like, I'm just trying to get through the day and get through my nine to five. <clears throat> nope, that's not it at all. In fact, some of the greatest light workers have their nine to five and they light up people's life by simply being. Um, I've gone into restaurants where there have been waitresses and they've just smiled and have been like, how's your day? You know, just so sweet. Their light was so bright. It was simple. It wasn't fake. It was authentic. And guess what? That light was so moving and it really sparked my heart. It's that simplicity. You don't have to be complicated to be in your leadership. You got to be true to your soul, true to your heart. You know, so many people feel more comfortable being a parrot. All right, that's what they teach you how to be in this world, in this life, in the, in the education system. How can you be a parrot? When I tell you something, how good are you at remembering what I tell you and then writing it down? How good are you at, um, you know, s repeating what I say? How good are you? It is part of your indoctrination. Until you get that, you're going to be stuck in a loop of repeating everything on the news, repeating everything. No, that is not what you're here to do. You are not a parrot. You were born this galactic cosmic human being grounded on earth, here to be part of something bigger than yourself and yet to stand in your full sovereignty. Yes, you. if you got a mind and you can use it, you are here to utilize your intelligence, not to let it go by and be like, I don't care. I'm just going to drink another beer and uh, not have to think. There's nothing wrong with having a glass of wine, having a beer, if that's your thing. But there is something wrong when you start to use these things in order not to, not to be a sovereign being, not to make powerful choices. You know, that's why in the, in the animal kingdom, the humans are it. And the problem with, with being it is when you're indoctrinated and you are it and you're just being a parrot, okay? When you're not supposed to be a parrot, you're not. You're really, really not supposed to be a parrot. You're supposed to be a human. We are we are the highest on the food chain, and yes, there are higher. <laughs> and that is, that is also connecting to our higher selves. That's why it's important to do the healing work. I spent, I devoted 12 years of my life pretty much full time diving into the world of healing, education and learning teaching um, in order to bring about change in my clients and in myself. Am I perfect? Absolutely not. Okay. No, I'm not better than anyone. I'm not, I'm not perfect. I am not perfect. But I have come so far from where I have been, <laughs> you would never, never even recognize me. Like you wouldn't know who I was because I have worked on changing my belief systems. I have worked on shifting my vibration. I have let go of a lot of this trauma. I have released so much of my generational trauma. And I come from a family that on the outside looks very normal, but, but but through the lineage, I have discovered some very um, big challenges, <laughs> you should say. Very, you know, darkness infiltrates all lineages, okay? That is a whole nother topic. I have been a catalyst of change in my lineage, in my DNA. I have released a lot of the curses in the DNA and they are transferable, by the way. So if your, say your great, 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 great grandfather was a high ranking Mason or something like that, and they were doing things that were not in alignment with the creator, that were anti-God, anti-life, so to speak, you get my drift, you know, um, doing things that sacrificed the well-being of others, um, 
then that energy goes boom straight through your lineage guess who gets to inherit it you why and you you wonder why do i keep getting this happening why why does why do i keep getting in car accidents right why like for me i had two priuses that were brand freaking new brand new they were baby blue and i was like i live in california i want a prius guess what you wouldn't believe it the first one somebody rammed into my prius while i was driving to orange county <laughs> and totaled it because they're very because they're a little bit flimsy and it was done and guess what um i bought another one and i was sleeping in west hollywood where i was living and um in there you know they you park on the side of the streets everybody does it's the craziest thing because you always have to move your car and you always get tickets <laughs> anyhow i lived right off of melrose place and i had a little bungalow and i had my car on the street and all of a sudden i heard boom like the loudest most terrifying sound I, I was freaked out I was in my little nighty and it was like four in the morning I ran out and guess what out of all the cars in the street it was my car that got totaled a drunk driver in a truck ran into my car wow and guess what they the, um, they took him off the scene and he got away with it. His daughter picked him up. He was drunk, but the police, by the time the police came, and the whole point is, I and I had paid that car off, like, like light years earlier, because I, at the time, I thought it was gonna help my credit or something. So I was like, yeah, I'll just pay it off. And guess what? I got like a check for a couple thousand dollars. I lost like, you know well over twenty thousand dollars the whole point is okay it's not just to tell you that story <laughs> but the whole point is um i realized that there were karmic debts okay karmic debts that i had to pay not because i'm a bad person but because somebody or some people in my lineages have made very bad choices a lot of the stuff that has come down the pipeline I have been clearing or having to deal with and I think it might be because I volunteered to you know at some level I said okay I'm gonna come back into this lineage and I'm going to work on these themes I'm gonna work on these traumas I'm gonna work on the self-sovereignty issue so that's something these are all themes that we are dealing with that are ancestral themes so if the theme was either overpowering others and abusing power or if the theme was victimization either way the solution is sovereignty okay so that's that's the whole gist of it so why why did this happen i'm like how could this happen out of the hundreds of cars the thousands of streets what out of everybody my car got hit and completely totaled twice so i go deeper okay into the healing and i find out that there was some stuff that happened in the lineage of my forefathers and it wasn't good and it wasn't something that um it's something that had bound our lineage right because some people sell their lineages they do they do it for their own greater good in that moment in that life in that lifetime but they sell the whole lineage out i will have to explain to you in another in another podcast because it's simply too much to share here but that being said um it connects people to into these dark forces into their into their lineages right or dark karma if you want to speak or like you know entities and and these sort of um darker beings get attached how about i put it that way 
And so what happens is, um, you know, you're going away from that. You're like, you know, I'm going in a different direction. I'm here to bring light. I'm here to bring healing. And I'm here to bring it not in just a way that's in a sweet little package. That's like, ah, ha, ha, you love and light. And no, it's about getting real. It's about being raw. It's about telling the truth. It's about be, even being hardcore, right? You're going to be a hardcore healer. And so I was being a hardcore healer for many years in LA, sharing this work with everybody. And um, it was incredible. I had my healing practice. But as you go into this, you, you understand you're unraveling layers and layers and layers and layers. And it just is layers. Think of all the karma your ancestors created. If they stole land from somebody, guess who gets to pay for it? You do. You do. It is inherited karma. Did you know that? Be responsible for how you live your life now because the things you do today are going to affect your children and your grandchildren and your great, 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 great grandchildren. So that's just something to think about. Now, going back into our leadership, if you say you're like in California and they're, and they're doing these mandates, trying to inject children with something that has not been... <sighs> I'm not going to go into this argument. But let's just say it could be lethal for kids. Just being very honest. Okay? And don't tell me, oh, it's science. Honey, you haven't done all the work. It takes many years, up to 10 years to do, uh, you know, to do something in the lab, to check it out, to make sure that what the side effects are. It takes a long time. It's not just science because I knew people that worked in the pharmaceutical industry. Okay? I've had, my mom's had clients that have worked in the pharmaceutical industry and I've worked with people in the pharmaceutical industry that were crying, that were absolutely crying because they're like sick of their job. They hate it. It's nothing but a lie. They have to, they pay their scientists to give them the studies that they want. And if they do not deliver the studies that they want and the data that they want, they will get fired and they'll just hire a new team that is more agreeable. Scientists have become the most bullied people. They they are they are, if they don't agree, if they are not if they are not willing to serve the dark overlords, basically they have no job. Bottom line, yes it's true. I've worked with those people that I've wanted to get out and, and also on top of that have experienced abuse within that industry, sexual abuse, rape, and um, blackmail, okay? So, yeah, I've worked with all kinds of people. I know a lot. It's not that I know more than anybody else, but I just, I work with people. That's what I do. I work with people on their deepest core issues. And no, I never reveal their name. It's confidential. But you know, what's coming out of it is the truth because people are sick of the lies. They're sick of it. They are sick of it. They want to, some people want to die. They come and they are, they are devastated. They don't even know what to do after this because they've been in this industry for so long, right? And that's why they come because they want to step into their leadership, into their truth, into their power and to bridge into something new they don't want to keep doing this because it is killing their soul and i am all about the soul being enlivened and being in its truth and being in its power okay so the point is, is that we have to step into we have to make that leap ourselves and we need to get help like if you need support reach out and talk to me if you need to make a career change you know that is that's a big deal it's not a little deal it's a big deal and we have to be responsible though because that karma is heavy you pay now or you pay later kind of how it is right credit card <laughs> charge it up but you're gonna have to pay for that plus interest so we have to make choices that are in alignment with our truth and with our soul and with with what we really believe in do we really want people to be prisoners and be locked out of uh, supermarkets so they can't feed their children because they don't want to, you know, get poisoned? Um, I don't think that's fair, but I also can't be 
you know, in California right now and protesting about it. I have to be where I am in the Appalachian Mountains. This is where I'm meant to be right now. I'm being called to be here on Crystal Mountain, on top of these crystals, on top of the mountain, doing this work holding sacred space for everybody but at the same time it's not my job to go around and do everything and that's why I say you have to step into your leadership because I can't do everything I can't take all the information and do something about it because I'm working on five books at Rada Publishing House I'm enlivening and empowering people's voices at Rada Publishing House that's a full-time job and then some even my weekends it's a full-time job And then I still see my clients in between. So I have to say, I can't do everything. And that's not my place to do everything. A leader, I am a leader in the work that I do. I am a leader in also helping to bring more healing. I am a leader in activating your leadership so that you can step up to the plate and you can do something in your community and you can be a voice of reason and you can be a leader in the heal, you know healing industry and you can be a leader in the awakening star seeds book and share your story of awakening and help activate other people who are also going through the same experiences you can be a leader in energy healing and soul medicine book and be a leader in the healing industry not because you are better but because you are using your voice to your fullest potential you understand when opportunity knocks you say yes if it is aligned with your soul so that's just where I'm going with it I'm helping to create leadership but I can't be a leader for everything and that is where I invite you to be a leader in your own life stop just taking everything as it is and going with the flow because that's not really where we're at right now that would have been appropriate at a certain time in life a certain decade a certain you know, year where things were just sort of going as they were. This is not the time for that. This is not a time to just, you know, be a yogi in a cave and not care about anything. Although those people are important too. But that's, if you're listening, this is probably not your life path because you're already, you're already somewhat indoctrinated and you probably won't be able to do that. Because it's just not, it's not viable. There are, there are yogis, by the way, that do live like in the Himalayas, that live in the caves. And they are to be honored and revered. Their leadership is in anchoring in unbelievable light. Because the dark never stops and the dark never sleeps. You should know that. And you might not understand what I'm saying and that's okay. The dark never sleeps. They don't. They do not sleep. They work 24-7. And when we sleep, they work 24-7. And they never stop. So there are these benevolent forces on earth that are anchoring in the light. And they never stop. And the only thing they do, and they are higher dimensional beings, is anchor in more light. Okay? Without them, our world would not even exist. Because it would crumble already. (laughs) So there are, there are forces of light that stand for us, okay? And now it's time for you to be a force of light. To not just be a whatever kind of person, but to step into your power. And that doesn't mean you have to be in charge, be a leader, and be a city council person. It just means in your particular life, you're making conscious choices. You're saying, wait a minute, I'm not going to repeat that. Wait a minute, I don't think that's true wait a minute, right? It's called being discerning. You're now making active choices in your life where before you're like, okay, everybody's doing it. I'm going to do it too. I'm going to follow everybody. So nobody says anything bad about me. No, that's not a leader. That's a coward. And that's a sheep. You don't want to go that route. You want to follow your truth. And whatever that truth is, if that's really your truth, then I respect that. Right, But we're not here to to tell other people how to live their lives. We're here to share, empower, and inspire. Um, Anyhow, I just wanted to share this with you this morning. I woke up and I was like, I have to talk about this. I really do. I am here to ignite and activate leadership within individuals. You know, through the books that I'm doing, curating. My 
my human design is being a manifester 5.0. What that means is I can create projects and I have done that in Hollywood holding space for people while they made their films and became famous. And I am doing it now with the books because I don't also, I didn't like the leadership that was going on there. I am the leader of my life. I am being told by a creator to create these books and therefore I am doing it. And it doesn't just happen magically. Yes, I'm a manifester, but that means it's still a lot of work. So when people say yes and they want to be a part of these projects, then I help them to cultivate their story, to help bring their voice forward, to help bring their message forward. And I work with the team. Last, I think it was last year we onboarded a um, incredible editor. We were working with a new designer and we hired a formatter and other people to help us in between. So it is a big undertaking and it's incredible though. I've really been enjoying the people I've been meeting. I'm, I feel really honored that they trust me in the process and I feel extremely proud of them when they step into their leadership. Okay, so it's a beautiful experience and that is because I stepped into my leadership. Now, being a leader doesn't mean you're pounding your chest like King Kong on top of New York, you know. <laughs> But it just means that in your life, you are making active choices. You are choosing consciously, and in doing so, you empower yourself and others. How about that? With that, I just want to wish you a beautiful day. Know that you are loved. Know that there is a divine plan. And that is not to be paralyzed in fear. That is not where you should be. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, step up and get out of that if you are in fear a lot of people come to me telling me they're in paralyzing fear and that is one of the reasons why i do spinning to heal the world for free monthly i do this as a collective contribution this is my contribution amongst other things but it's something that i do my next group session will be september 8th and the theme of that group will be clearing fear and stepping into leadership. I hope you will join us. With that, I wish you a beautiful day and so much love. Blessings.